If observed from a space satellite, an unusual blue element stands out prominently within Utah's national park. Zooming closer into this view reveals a spectacular sight nestled deep within the canyon. A captivating ensemble of 23 ponds, each displaying hues of blue, yellow, and green enhance the beauty of this place exponentially. Yet in this arid landscape dominated by brown rocky terrains, the presence of these vivid blue ponds raises intriguing questions. Are they part of a clandestine NASA project, or perhaps ornate swimming pools? The true purpose behind their existence is even more enthralling than one might imagine. To understand these beautiful blue ponds, we need to journey back 1,500 years, when humans first identified a unique chemical element with the help of bone fires. Yes, the very same bone fires we use to warm ourselves during cold winters. The method is simple and involves lighting a few pieces of wood on fire. However, the intention isn't for warmth this time, but for the ash or residue left behind. This ash, rich in chemical compounds, is collected in a pot and then mixed with water. Some of these chemicals dissolve in the water, altering its hue. The mixture is then filtered and left out in the sun to dry. Once the water evaporates, it leaves behind certain crystalline structures. These are the chemical elements that humans have been utilizing for centuries. Since it's derived from a pot and ash, it's aptly named potash. Historically, people have used potash to make soap, dye fabrics, and even in the production of glass items. As animal fat is melted and potash is added, the mixture transforms into a liquid soap. Similarly, in the production of glass products, introducing potash lowers the melting point of glass, making it much easier to mold into desired shapes. With the rise in human population, the demand for potash skyrocketed. By the year 1788, thousands of factories had been established solely for potash production. In these factories, wood was primarily burned to collect the ash. In 1790, an inventor named Samuel Hopkins introduced a novel method for potash production. Instead of drying the potash liquid in the sun, it was baked in a furnace. This new technique significantly expedited the production process. This method became the first patent in American history signed by the inaugural American president, George Washington. Due to this patent, potash gained immense recognition, prompting various scientists to commence diverse experiments on it. In the midst of these experiments, one stood out that was poised to change the world forever. A few years after the patent was signed in 1807, a scientist named Humphrey Davy placed raw potash in a pot and subjected it to an electric current. He observed tiny metallic balls forming within the potash, which suddenly combusted in a dramatic blast. Davy had unveiled a new element to the world, and its name? Drawing from its origin in potash, Davy named this element potassium. Yes, potassium. When many hear the term potassium, images of plums, bananas, or raisins might come to mind. Indeed, these fruits are a good source of potassium for humans, but they don't contain the pure element. Pure potassium is incredibly reactive, instantly reacting with almost any substance it comes into contact with. This was evident in Davy's experiment, where the potash reacted with ambient water vapors, causing it to combust explosively. To prevent such reactions, pure potassium is usually stored submerged in oil, ensuring it doesn't come into contact with water vapor in the air. The byproducts of potassium have found myriad uses in today's world. So many, in fact, that if we started listing them all, it would outstrip the length of this video. From batteries to fertilizers, and from glass to gunpowder, Potassium has become indispensable to our modern world. When animal waste is added to potash, it forms potassium nitrate, a primary ingredient in gunpowder and fireworks. Post Humphrey Davy's discovery, countless products began to be produced from potash and potassium. However, the most significant challenge was the manufacturing of potash itself. After Davy's discovery for many years, potash was primarily produced by burning wood. Due to its rising demand, large swaths of forests in Europe and the U.S. were felled, posing a significant environmental threat. Then, in 1861, Germany unearthed a new source for potash production, not from the forests, but hidden within a specific type of rock. These rocks were abundant in Germany. This discovery proved to be a game-changer. Not only did it make potash production more cost-effective, but it also helped conserve forests, mitigating the environmental damage. Now, with an abundance of potash, Germany began dispersing it across lands and noticed some unexpected advantages. When potash was spread over fields, crops grew faster and required significantly less water. Many farmers who had been grappling with water scarcity found that with the addition of potash, their crops flourished even with minimal irrigation. Within a few years, Germany established itself as the leading potash exporter. In 1910, just four years before the outbreak of World War I, and with much of the world dependent on German potash, 
Germany played its first strategic move by halting potash exports. The decision by Germany severely impacted America. This was the turning point when the US Congress allocated funds to identify domestic sources of potash. One such potential location was near Moab City in Utah. However, the challenge was that the potash wasn't close to the surface, but lay deep beneath, at a depth of around 3,500 feet. Undeterred, the U.S. began the rigorous process of mining in the region, digging deep to extract potash-rich rocks from the heart of the earth. Everything was back on track until a devastating event in 1963 changed the course of operations. A methane gas leak inside the potash mine led to a massive explosion when it came into contact with an open flame. The mine shook with a violent blast, tragically claiming the lives of 18 workers. The very next year, a Canadian mining company introduced an innovative method for extracting potash. In Utah itself, they dug a shaft deep to the level of 3,500 feet and injected it with pressurized water. The potash deposits would dissolve into this water, which was then pumped out through another shaft, collecting in a pond above ground. These are the very ponds we can witness today in a myriad of colors. If you're thinking that the blue hue of the water is due to the potash, you'd be mistaken. The vibrant blue is a result of adding copper sulfate to the water, serving a dual purpose. Not only does it prevent the growth of bacteria, but the blue also attracts more sunlight, accelerating the evaporation process. As the sun's heat works its magic, the water evaporates, leaving behind the pure potash. At this Utah location, there are a total of 23 ponds sprawling over an area of 400 acres. Each pond takes roughly six to eight months to fully evaporate. As the water diminishes, the ponds transition from blue to green, and then from green to yellow. Ultimately, what remains are white potash crystals, which are then loaded onto trucks for distribution. For centuries, humans have utilized potash, and it has been a significant source of income. An estimate suggests that beneath Moab City alone, there is nearly two billion tons of potash reserves. With the price of one ton being $1.330, this single location can potentially generate a staggering $660 billion for America. The mesmerizing ponds of Utah aren't just a sight to behold, but a reflection of a legacy that has spanned centuries. As we look to the future, this precious resource promises continued growth, sustainability, and prosperity. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and remember, sometimes the most intriguing stories are beneath our very feet.